Hi, this is Scott from RedmondPhysicsTutoring.com, and in this video I'm going to show you an example with an electric charge moving in a magnetic field. And this is a bit trickier than many of the other examples that we work with in electricity and magnetism because you have to do things in 3D, and this messes up tons of people, uh, maybe partly because we need to use the right-hand rule, which I just abbreviate as RHR, and you need tricks to work in 3D. I have another video that I'll link to in the description with some simple, inexpensive hacks to help you visualize things in 3D. And in this example, I'll show you more details. All right, given the magnetic field of Montreal, which is 17.7 microteslas to the north and 4.6 microteslas to the west, if I search my pockets and find a 50 microcoulomb charge and I throw that charge at 350 meters per second, that's about the speed of sound, to the east, I need to find the magnetic force on that charge. So I need to sketch this out, as with any physics problem. I have my charged particle, it's 50 microcoulombs, and it's moving to the east. So I'll show the velocity going to the east, and the magnetic field has two components. I'm given a north component, which will be up, and there's a westward component, which I'll draw to the left. So the net magnetic field is actually west of north. And the way that I'm going to calculate the force is by knowing that the magnetic force on a moving charge is equal to the charge times the velocity cross the magnetic field. And that's the vector cross product. That's one of the reasons why I need to consider the vector for velocity and the vector for the magnetic field. If I used a standard xy axis, then I would have x to the right and y pointing up. That means that in this case, x is actually pointing east and y is pointing to the north. We can have a look at the compass rows. We have north, east, south, west. With the axes, we can really easily write down the velocity and the magnetic field in terms of the vector components and work in the cross product that way. So for the charge, we had a 50 microcoulomb charge. So that's 50 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. Then we need to actually evaluate V cross B. So I'm going to write these in. The velocity is 350 meters per second I hat. The magnetic field is actually negative 4.6 times 10 to the negative 6 i hat, plus 17.7 .7 times 10 to the negative 6 j hat. The next step is just to solve this algebraically, and I'm splitting it up into many steps to show one way to work with this, because I've had lots of students have trouble uh, working with i hats and j hats separately like this, and hopefully by splitting it up it makes it a little more clear. Essentially, though, you want to treat the i-hats and the j-hats just like any other mathematical term or algebraic term, and remember that i-hat cross i-hat is zero. So this whole part in the beginning, 350 times negative 4.6 times 10 to the negative 6, gets multiplied by zero. And then for the second part, the 350 times 17.7 .7 times 10 to the negative 6 ends up being 6.195 times 10 to the negative 3, and i hat cross j hat gives k hat. And I remember in undergrad I learned a neat way to remember this. If you write out i, j, I'm writing them as hats, i, j, k, i, j, as you move along to the right, the result is positive, but if you have to move to the left, the result is negative. So when I'm starting out with i hat, right up there, then cross j hat, that's going from the i hat towards the j hat, the next one is k hat, that's moving to the right, so i cross j is equal to positive k hat. If you were doing j cross i, you would go to the other direction, you would get a negative k hat. This is just one little trick that I picked up, there are other ways to remember this, you could just memorize. Essentially though, when we when we finish the math on this, we'll find that the magnetic force on the particle works out to be 3.1 times 10 to the negative 7 k hat newtons. And this is great, actually. This method works really well. It's fairly easy once you get a bit of practice with it. In this problem, it's really nice because we were given the magnetic field in components already, so it lends itself really well to this problem. And if you remember, the force is a vector, Therefore, it has the magnitude, and it needs the direction. 
for full marks. And I know that as a physics teacher, I was picky about that, and odds are your teacher is picky about that as well. And that's how you find the magnetic force using vector components. Next week, I'll look at the same problem with a different approach where you first find the force magnitude and then use the right-hand rule to find the direction, separate from that. I'm Scott Redmond, and I help students pass physics. If this video was helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube to let me know.